Hey everybody, I am Scotty J. Welcome back to Rock Dayton Live. We've got an awesome, awesome show for you today. Tis the season. I mean, the Christmas season is upon us. New Year's is upon us. And I know there's a lot of different kinds of music and a lot of different bands that people are thinking about, particularly at this time of year. One of the big ones, you know, maybe that might be the biggest one. You know, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. How awesome are they? Well, we just happen to have their drummer with us today who has a debut album, debut band, you know, that's coming out January 8th. It's called All Terrain. And ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by the one and only Jeff Plate. Jeff, how are you, man? I'm doing good. Thank you for the introduction. That was awesome. Well, you know, I always do my best, Jeff. But, uh, man, I, I, we're going to be talking about All Terrain coming out January 8th. And everybody, I've already listened to the whole thing. Mother's Day is the name of the album. It is killer. And Jeff, you bring in, you know, some familiar faces. Well, at least one familiar face from Trans-Siberian Orchestra, uh, your keyboardist. Um, but then other people that you've worked with over the years. I mean, you know, you've been the drummer for Metal Church. You're the drummer for Sabotage for a long time. So again, you know, you look at the parallels going with Trans-Siberian Orchestra, John Oliva. I mean, whew, I'm How much of an influence... Has John been on your career as a musician? Well, huge. I mean, I, I joined Sabotage in 1994. Right. And when I joined the band, I really felt like I found home. You know, I, I had been working with Zach Stevens for several years before that out in Boston. And this this is where the whole El Terrain saga began. But, uh, you know, when I met John and Paul O'Neill, that was during a handful of rain recording sessions Chris Oliva had passed you know Sabotage was in a real they were in some real turmoil at the time and, right. and I came in once I really dug into the music I just absolutely loved it I mean I, I knew who Sabotage was I had seen Hall of the Mountain King and Gutter Ballet and Headbangers Ball and all that but when I got into the band and really started getting into their musical catalog and realizing just how diverse they were and how good they were it was awesome. I mean, working with Zach again was one thing, but all of a sudden landing in this band, which completely fit my drumming style perfectly, it was great. So, but I mean, I've been working with John Oliva and Paul O'Neill for over 25 years. So through the sabotage years and through all the TSO years, of course, there's a lot of that that's kind of, kind of rubbed off on me. But uh, yeah, I, I couldn't have been happier and luckier at the time to, to land that gig when I did. Yeah, yeah, no, that's very cool. And then, uh, you know, your time with Metal Church, I know that, uh, you know, you're quite fond of some of those guys, as I would very much expect, as are we at Rock Titan, because we had Hal on and we had Vanderhoof on, which are, uh, you know, awesome guys, amazing musicians in their own right. You know, Vanderhoof, you know, the way he plays guitar and then Hal's vocals are just absolutely incredible. But speaking of vocals, so with... Altering and and this is a project, Jeff, that has been, I guess, really on your mind. Did I see for like thirty years? Yeah. So I mentioned I was working with with Zach Stevens. I lived out in Boston. I was working with a guitarist named Matt Leff. Zach was our singer. The band was called Wicked Witch. Right. And I saw that. Yeah. And at the time, we uh, we had a rehearsal room, and I had this primitive little recording set up. Well, I recorded basically everything that we did. I've got like 20, 25, 90 minute cassettes full of us. And some of it is working on songs. Some of it is me and Matt just jamming something off the top of our head. But anyhow, I have it all. And, and as I mentioned, Zach, Zach ended up leaving Wicked Witch and, and became the lead vocalist in Sabotage. And he brought me into Sabotage. And, so anyhow, all these years passed. And in a few years ago, and I always used to kind of, go back and visit these old cassettes because there's some really cool stuff on there. And a couple of years ago, I was listening to some of it and the tapes were literally starting to deteriorate. <laughs> so I figured, you know, I better digitize this stuff. So on the TSO tour two years ago, I bought a digital deck and I started digitizing some of these ideas and, and you know, and filing them away. And as I was doing it, I realized it's like, there's some great stuff here that we never did anything with, you know, whether it was just a riff that Matt played or, some rhythm or something that we were doing, it was all just there. And we w hadn't done anything with it. We hadn't finished a lot of ideas. Some of it we never even touched on more than just jamming on something. Okay. So 
Uh, Matt Leff, unfortunately, was afflicted with cancer. Mm. And several years ago, you know, he was, he had gotten pretty sick and I, and I got a hold of Matt and I said, look, we've got all this music and I would like to try to do something with it if you don't mind. You know, so he gave me his blessing and he said, you know, go ahead, go ahead and do with it what you want. Keep me, keep me posted. You know, I want to know how the progress is and I want to hear what you're doing. So we, we lost Matt last year on oh, man. New Year's Eve, actually. So rest in peace, Matt. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyhow. I had all these ideas, and literally, there are some jams. The title Mother's Day has been in my mind for literally almost 30 years. And it revolved around one riff that lasts about six seconds in the middle of this eight-minute jam. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like the longest song on the album, yeah. Oh, my God. But 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 that, that song isn't really reflective of where the riff came from. It was just this one riff that Matt played that just always stuck in my head. So, anyhow... Um, you know, I told Matt, I said, I have a guy here locally. His name is Tommy Cook, guitar player. I've known Tommy for a long time. I said, I think he can handle this. So I, I brought Tommy into my studio and I said, this is what I'm thinking of doing. And I played him some of the riffs and and here again, these are cassette tapes in a, (laughs) in a loud rehearsal room. Some of it's distorted. Some of it's already been deteriorated. It's like, so we had to figure out. A lot of things that Matt was playing, but once Tommy got a handle on that, I was like, okay, that's step one. Step two, this is the song title I have for this idea, and these are the lyrics. So, together, and Tommy completely got what I was thinking, he got what I was trying to get across, and it's like, wow, this is really cool. So, as we had a first, we had the first couple ideas really kind of solidified and actually Tommy was singing, doing the vocals just as a demo. I had initially talked to Zach Stevens about singing on this project. Oh, wow. So when I presented these ideas to Zach, he was already, you know, neck deep in in Archangel and him and his wife were working on that together. And he said, Jeff, you know what? This stuff sounds great but I'm, I'm really involved in this project. And if I do something else, I really want to work with my wife on the lyrics. And the whole time I, when I started this project, I was like, okay, I want to, I'm going to do the lyrics. I'm going to do the melodies. I'm going to do the arranging. I want this to be my baby. And Zach, to his credit, it was the best advice I got out of anybody. He's like, dude, just, just run with this on your own. You know, you've got a great singer on this demo. So that gave Tommy a lot of confidence. Right on. And yeah. it also gave me, you know, it kind of just opened my eyes to, you know what, he's right. If I'm going to do this the way I want to, I just have to take the ball and run with it. So in a weird way, I was kind of glad that Zach stepped out, even though I really wanted to work with him again. Sure. It allowed me to really develop my ideas and for Tommy and Colin Holloway to develop their vocals around what I was doing. And, you know, and, and here we are. Yeah, no. Well, you, you talk about Zach, man. That dude can wail too. I mean, the notes he can hit. Wow. I, he, he's one of those guys. I mean, he is one of those classic metal singers, really. I mean, he's like, when you hear him, it's unmistakable. The things that he can do vocally, that would have been cool to hear, you know, with the uh, Ultra Rain. But that being said, you talk about Tommy Cook. I've heard him. He's incredible. And then you got Colin Holloway on there too. Now, one of the things we'd kind of touched on before we formally got into this conversation, and uh, again, everybody, we are here with Jeff Plate, drummer from Trans Siberian Orchestra, and his new band, Alterain. And you've heard him on Metal Church, and you've heard Sabotage. Um, but uh, so Colin Holloway, Tommy Cook, I know they both sing, they both play guitar. Does one of them kind of take the lead more so on the guitar side and the vocal side? So Tommy Cook is he primarily the vocalist, and Colin primarily the guitarist, or? No, I would say vocals are, are split pretty much 50-50. I, okay. I think Tommy does sing one more song on the album, and it was just that song suited his voice uh, to my ear. You know, that was the decision I made. Guitar-wise, yeah, Tommy's the main guy. He, he's the guy that I really started working with initially on all this. He's a fantastic guitar player. I mean, his solos are really, really great. So Tommy did did all the the guitar solos on the record. Okay. Colin right on. Colin contributed some rhythm guitar stuff. There's a couple of guitar melodies that, that Colin contributed, but but vocally 
I mean, here again, this was something that when, when this whole thing started, it was like, okay, so this is my first rodeo into this, you know, I've always been the guy behind the drums, coming up with a drum part, playing somebody else's songs. Now here, here, this was, these are my ideas. Right. Tommy really wrapped his head around it. I explained to him, you know, this is what this song means and blah, blah, blah. And, and he totally liked it. And same with Colin. Voices are kind of similar, but they are different enough that it adds a certain different texture to, to the songs that they're singing. And yeah. Yeah. when they sing together, they sound fantastic. And this is, this kind of came out of, as Tommy and I were working on All Terrain, the beginning of it, we also had a cover band called Sun Sonic. Colin Holloway sang in that band, played guitar. Oh, really? Zach Hamilton played bass, guitar, and keyboards, and also sang. Okay. And the three of them together could sing like, I was like, wow, I gotta use this. So literally when COVID came around and, and knocked out the whole live music scene, it was like, guys, let's focus on this record. And let's focus on, we're gonna make this as good as we can. We're gonna make a record that we're gonna be proud of. Right. You know, I wanna utilize all these vocals. I wanna utilize all this instrumentation. And along with Kevin McCarthy on bass, the four of them sing great together. Yeah. And I think the vocals on this record really are, are something that stands out. Musicianship is one thing, but the vocals are like, they sound great. It's and, funny um, you bring that up, Jeff, because yeah, as I was already starting to review, because everybody, you know, along with this podcast with Jeff, you will also see my review of Mother's Day out on RockTitan.tv. But, uh, you know, I was going through it. And from the minute Shine kicked off, you know, the first track, Man, I was all in. I was hooked. I'm like, wow, you know, th these guys are for real, you know. Even though I wasn't familiar with some of the names, um, you know, apart from your own and then, you know, Jim playing keyboards, uh, you know, organ, whatnot. Um, man, I mean, whew, you know, well, Sean. You, you know, Jay Mangini on keyboards, she's my secret weapon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We had, a lot of, we had a lot of this stuff developed. And of course, Jane and I have known each other for all these years, and we've always talked about working together, as, as we all do. So I sent her a couple of songs, and she's like, holy crap, Jeff, I love this. So I think Witness and Thin Red Line were the first two songs that I sent her. And what she sent back to me, I was like, oh, wow, this is awesome. It took it from a guitar-based hard rock metal sound to something, it, it opened another door. So yeah, Jane obviously been she's been in the industry and she's worked with TSO for for a long time. The other four guys, Kevin, Tommy, Colin, and Zach, have never really done anything on this level. So I said, guys, just follow me on this. I'm going <laughs> to put you through the ringer. I'm going to I'm going to put you through. Everything has got to be tight. We're going to go over these vocals a thousand times. They bought in, and, and the end result, I think, certainly shows that. Yeah, no, it absolutely does. And, it, and and I'm glad you brought up the whole idea of, you know, the band being guitar heavy versus you bring Jane in, you know, with keyboards, and now you've introduced a whole new element into the mix. I mean, it just brings a whole new sound into it. Apart from the relationship that you had with her professionally in trans Siberian Orchestra, what was it that made you... In your mind, since this is your baby, you know, all terrain, what made you want to go from like a more guitar centric, guitar heavy instrumental to introducing that keyboard organ element to it? So when we first started working, Zach Hamilton also plays keyboards and he plays keyboards very well. Okay. Uh, so we had started working on some ideas. So we initially had a couple ideas for Witness and we were kind of stuck on a couple of other parts and same with Thin Red Line. But, but Jane was just... You know, I know she had this library of ideas and sounds, and Jane is just cool. She is just a cool, cool person, and I wanted to see what I was going to get back from. And like I said, I sent her those two songs. What she sent back to me, you know, it was like I sent her witness. She sends me back like 12 different keyboard parts. It's like, okay, seven of them don't work, but these other five are awesome. So I knew that she was she was into it, right on. And, and as this thing progressed, you know, a lot of, like I said, a lot of this stuff was really, it was basically hammered out. And we had the format for everything before Jane was involved. But as I started feeding her songs and just telling her, you know, this is what I'm looking for in this section, 
uh, this is what I'm looking for here. Here I don't know, send me some ideas. And everything that she was sending to me, I mean, she would send a lot of ideas. There was always something in there that fit perfectly. So it just complemented everything that we were doing. And it, I don't want to say it, it took the edge off of us. I think to the contrary. I think it made it bigger. I think it made it heavier. And there are certainly parts where, you know, her playing is so emotional, emotional, it takes you somewhere else. I agree. But, but her, her approach to it was just great. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree with you more. So, debut comes out January the 8th, Mother's Day. As far as, like, any long-term plans, have you thought about that? Is the ambition, is the goal here that once live music resumes again someday, you know, is the plan to go out as All Terrain and, and tour as a band? That would be nice. Yeah. I mean, that, that, the plan, I think, honestly, the plan right now is to, we want to, you know, introduce ourselves to the world, first of all. And, you know, this is our first album. Let's see what people think of it. Uh, we're all very, very proud of this. We've had great feedback so far. And All Terrain number two is already in the works. I've, I've got probably nine ideas that are pretty, pretty well together. I've got lyrics for, for all of them. So once this first cycle runs its course, or not even its course, but you know, sometime soon, probably after the first of the year, we're really going to start, you know, you know, breaking into into the next record. And hey, to your point, let's hope things clear up next year and we can do some live shows. But in the event that it, it does not happen, um, we're going to have another record out next year. Oh wow, very cool. Well, you weren't messing around with this first one, you know, and obviously you've been. This is been on your mind and you've been working with this idea for a long long time and uh you got 12 tracks on this initial release and you know now you're talking about nine more which i think is absolutely awesome um yeah yeah that'll be very cool that one of the things i think that is interesting you know talking about the you hope to get out there and play live and you know obviously people haven't been able to do that Let's transition a little bit to uh, TSO because obviously that is, uh, they're an arena band. I mean, this is like huge uh, symphony orchestra. I mean, this is such a huge, I don't even know what to call it. Like it, it really, I mean, it's, it's, it's an entity. I mean, it really is from a brand perspective, music perspective, all the different elements that go into it. I know you have got a, uh, a live stream that is coming up, what, today is uh, so the 18th, December 18th, yes? Yep, 8 p.m. Yes. So uh, how different is that for you? Have you ever done any kind of live streaming like that before? Or, you know? Uh, no, I mean, the whole thing is different. It's just... Right. It's just so weird what has happened this year. You know, it's like I've been doing this for a long time and I've been with TSO. I've been working with John Levin and Paul O'Neill, like I said, for over, over 25 years, yeah. 26, 27 years. It's yeah. unreal. To think that TSO has literally, you know, broken all the norms and just gotten more popular and bigger and better every year is nobody ever would have thought that. But yeah. I have had so many people come to me. It's like, you know, Jeff, you've been doing this for a long time. You ever think about retiring? You ever thinking about this or that? It's like, no, I, I feel good. I'm still playing good. I said Christmas is coming every year and, you know, there's no end in sight for TSO. Right. All of a sudden this damn COVID comes along and pulls the rug right out from under all of us. And, you know, earlier this year, we, we could kind of see what was coming. I mean, we really held out to the last minute. And then the decision was inevitable. I, I can't even say it was our decision to make. It was just obvious that we couldn't tour. But the live stream was obviously the next step. And how are we going to do this? Taking this massive arena show transforming this into your computer screen or your television screen how, how do we how do we honestly represent tso and what we built over all these years so right. you know what we've got great people in place the management the production staff is, has been here for a long long time paul 
Paul O'Neill, we lost Paul three years ago. Right. He, he left us in a very good place. We've got some very good people involved. His family is behind everything 100%. Yeah. So this live stream is going to be one for the ages. I, I, I don't even know what this is going to look like, but we're working on it now, and it's going to be spectacular. So this Friday, December 18th at 8 p.m. Eastern time is is when we're going to hit, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, so this wasn't something that was pre-recorded and is going to be put out there live. You're going to be do is this is going to be live in real time? Yep, everything's recorded live. Wow! Oh my God, that's going to be huge, Jeff. Wow, that's going to be fun. But uh, so again, now we're going to transition back to all terrain, and uh, you know we'll kind of get going here. I know you've got better things to do than to talk to me all day long. And uh, I got to go check out, see what the snow is doing outside. You know, speaking of Trans-Siberian Orchestra, because it's like Siberia outside. We're getting a big nor'easter from what I understand. I got to fire up the snowblower. What the heck, man? It is December. Well, yeah, right. But uh, that didn't mean a whole lot last year. You know, this oh, year, no. it looks like it's going to be a little bit different. But um, so Rat Pack Records, though, Rat Pack Records is who you've gone through. And I know that Metal Church is with those guys. Um, did your relationship with any of the guys in Metal Church lead to you uh, working with Rat Pack for All Terrain? Or how, how did that all come to pass? And how do you feel about that relationship so far with your debut set to come out January 8th? Yep, of course. So so Rat Pack, uh, I'm not even sure exactly when, when Kurt Vanderhoof, Metal Church, decided to go to Rat Pack. It was... I think maybe the second record I did with the band. I'm not. I can't even remember right now. Right. But uh, but Joe O'Brien, uh, president, owner, creator of Rat Pack. You know, I met him on one of the one of the metal cruises, and we just we just hit it off. He's a great guy. He really loves the bands that he has on his roster, and he busts his ass. You know, I I know what he did with Metal Church, and how hard he worked at it. I mean, we had some fairly decent success with Joe. So when I started developing this, I mean, and, and we'd stayed in contact. We talked a, a few times a year when I, when I first left Metal Church. But, you know, once this El Terrain thing started to develop, I sent Joe a couple of the demos. Well, we had taken two songs, Witness and Thin Red Line, and went to a studio, ultrasound studio, my friend Joe Clapp out in, uh, out in uh, Massachusetts. I sent Joe these two songs, and he was like, wow. This is like one of the most interesting things I've heard in a long time. Right on. So, you know, he was suggesting this and suggesting that. And I mean, I knew right then that I was going to work with Joe. It's like, okay. I know Joe. We trust him. I know his work ethic. He likes what he's heard so far. And, you know, the more stuff I kept sending to him, the more he was like, yeah, this is, this is good. This is good. So, you know, kind of going back to your question before about, you know, what's the plan here? Well, I think I've got a good team, you know, not, not just the people in my band, but having Joe working the label, Kevin doing, doing the PR and the, the media and stuff. Both of these guys are really into this record. And that just says a lot to me because, Very cool. you know, they could have passed me up. I mean, honestly, I've done a lot of really great things in my career, but I've never led a project before. And the fact that they decided to step up and take this on because of the music, you know, to me, that says a lot. And, we're all very proud of this record. I think there's really something special here. And, well, we're going to find out real soon. January yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. Their hands on it. They're going to let me know what they think about it. But uh, I, I think things are going to be good. Right on. Right on. Well, I couldn't agree with you more, Jeff. And thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on Rock Titan Live today. And, uh, again, everybody, we are here with uh, just uh, awesome Jeff Plate, man. Uh, you hear him on Trans-Siberian Orchestra, December the 18th live stream Trans Siberia Orchestra at 8 p.m. So make sure you all go check that out. And again, the debut of his band, All Terrain. Mother's Day is the name of it. January the 8th. Absolutely incredible. And if you've all enjoyed this podcast, which I have every confidence that you have, and uh, you know a lot of the people that we've talked about, Jeff and I just today, you know, Chloe Lowry, she's out there, Trans Siberian Orchestra, Kurt Vanderhoof, Metal Church, Mike Hal, you know, from Metal Church. We've got all those guys. They are all featured on Rock Titan Live. So you must go out there and check us out. Give us a subscribe, and of course, we're going to share all of your information as well, Jeff. And, uh, you know, give you guys the attention you so rightfully deserve. And uh, thank you again. And uh, much success, man. Much success with uh, TSO through this new kind of landscape that we're in. I know you guys are an arena band, you know, so that's got to be a, 
different. We'll see how this live stream goes. But uh, all terrain, man, very excited about it, and I loved it. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk after the record's out. Yeah, man, that'll be good. So we'll circle back. And again, everybody, I am Scotty J and Rock Tate Live. We're out. Thanks, man. See you later.